This object appears to be very ancient, originating from the galactic disk where a lot of very old stars reside. And this appears to be a very ancient object from an earlier period in the universe, which means that it is very important to see what the makeup of that comet is and compare that to comets in the solar system. What does a, a comet that formed 4.5 billion years ago look like versus one that formed 8 billion years ago? Something along those lines. Tell us about that. That What, what can we learn about the earlier universe from studying 3i Atlas? Yeah, John, I swear you should just be writing scientific papers yourself because you're always asking the questions that are like the key questions about what we're trying to figure out when we come to this stuff. But you kind of hit the nail on the head, but it's actually, it's even more extreme than the numbers you quoted. So the way it works is the speed of one of these interstellar objects as they enter the solar system kind of roughly traces. It's not, there's kind of big uncertainty on it, but it roughly tells you how old they are. And that's because older as time moves on, if you're just a, an object floating around the galaxy, the more and more time there is, the more time there is for you to get gravitationally scattered off of things like giant molecular clouds. So older things in the galaxy move faster. So Oumuamua was moving so slowly in the galaxy with respect to everything else that we, even though we don't know for sure, it's very likely that it was younger than about 100 million years old. While 3i Atlas was moving more than double the speed, it's like 58 kilometers per second versus like 26. And that corresponds roughly somewhere between 3 and 11 giga years. So significantly older object and borisov weirdly enough is kind of right in the middle so we're kind of looking we're kind of even though our the eight the age kinematic relationship of these objects is very kind of order of magnitude ish and uncertain because it's it's kind of fundamentally it, it really applies more when you have ensemble of objects so many objects it is kind of peculiar or at least curious that we found now found three interstellar objects and you get one that's really young one that's really old. So the really young one, right, is a Muamua. The really old one is 3i Atlas. And the one that's smack in the middle is Borisov. And I think that that means, so this is what Aster Taylor, who I think you just had on your show, what they kind of showed in um, a paper we wrote a couple of days ago. It's very roughly, I think, if you look back, if you think of these objects as tracing planet formation or the as tracing the efficacy of planet formation during a certain amount of time, I think it's kind of telling you that at all of these stages throughout the Milky Way's lifetime or the last hundred million years, the last billion years, and approximately the last 10 giga years, you have roughly equally ubiquitous planet formation. So another way of saying that is that 3i Atlas, I think, is telling you that planet formation was going pretty efficiently at the earliest stages of the Milky Way's lifetime. And even the lowest metallicity stars were still efficiently forming and ejecting interstellar comets, which is, I mean, if that's not, if that's not astronomically beautiful, I don't know what is. Well, it, it, it creates more questions than it answers because that's true. if you, if you have planets that early, uh, Fermi paradox, where are they? Those types of questions start arising and that, that this has been habitable for a very, very long time, the universe. Now the youth of Oumuamua, that it was a very young object. Does Is it possible that there's something hidden in there that would account for the weirdness of that object? Just simply, it's, it's, it's something in a young state. That, you know, maybe it hasn't had enough time to pull itself into a, <laughs> yeah, a, a more spherical position or something like that if it's a, a shard from a destroyed planet or something like that. Does the youth possibly speak to the weirdness of that object? I don't know. I just that's a good idea, but I I just don't. I would I would flip it on its head to you. I would say the youth is like the weird, the weirdest thing about it. I don't know. It's still a mystery, to be honest. Like I am obviously biased to my own theories or theories that I've co-authored, but it's still a mystery. I'm hoping actually, like I think Amuamua's youth is one of the weirdest properties of the object. Like why did we, given the age of the galaxy, like when there should be more stuff that formed further back in time, like why was the first one that we got the really young one? That is weird. It might be though, the fact that, you know, Muamua was moving really slowly in the gap. I mean, obviously it sped up as it was entering our solar system. It looked fast compared to the solar system objects that we study, but 
I think that something that Dusan Marchetta, Mar Marchetta and I showed in a recent paper was that typical interstellar objects, when LSST should be able to find them, they move really fast across the sky. And when you're moving really, really fast, they're really hard to detect because in order to detect them, you don't have to just see them in one image. You have to see them in multiple images. And if objects are moving fast enough that they move out of the image, by the time the telescope comes back to look at them, maybe that explains why Oumuamua was moving was so young. And that was the first one we got. Although I, I, I don't think I could authoritatively say that. I'm just speculating. In any sense, though, I think one, you know, fundamentally, and John, we were talking about this offline, just you and me, fundamentally, these interstellar comets, as they travel through the galaxy, they are getting, they are telling you, I think they're going to tell you about the differences in planet formation across the galaxy, but also how does this planetesimal material get processed in the interstellar medium? And the older they are, the longer time they've been exposed to things like high energy radiation and cosmic rays. So maybe when comparing what we see with our telescopes, with our assets like JWST and HST and all the ground-based stuff, if we compare the composition and dust profiles and stuff like that, that'll tell you about what happens to a comet after it's been processed for 100 million years versus 10 giga years and how different does that look because that has ramifications for stuff in the solar system like there's stuff in the Oort cloud these long period comets that get processed by the very same stuff in the galaxy as these interstellar objects so maybe that can help tell us about our planet formation in our own solar system and in exoplanetary systems well that was one thing that i found interesting is the reddening that was it, it detected early on with 3i uh, atlas and uh, you know that's of keen interest because that's usually organics right that that you know just exposure to the cosmic rays and you know the interstellar medium reddening objects like that but that's due to organic compounds isn't it it okay so it can be so the observations that we have do not preclude those from being there the, there's a there's a confounding point though that we have to be careful about so it could be that we're seeing organics or something like that. But there's other things that it could be. It could just be material that's gotten broken down from the galactic cosmic rays, like ices that are broken down, not, a, not necessarily organics. Also, the most important caveat, so at face value, if you look at just like, I don't think in the LSST paper we have this because we just have some colors in the LSST paper. But if you look, I don't know if you want to show it on your episode, but if we look at the, I think it is figure seven, figure seven in my paper, the one where there's a spectrum and colors that we got, that shows you that the object is reddened. And it also shows you how it looked, how the spectrum and the reflectance looks. And by that, I mean how the, col how the color of 3i Atlas compares to both Borisov and Oumuamua. And it kind of looks consistent with what we, had, what we saw with Oumuamua and Borisov. The problem, not a problem, but the, the, the important difference is that Muamua, you weren't seeing significant dust coma contamination. But for this object, we've already noticed photometrically even that there is a coma. So that means that it's much brighter than it would be without the coma. So a lot of this light that we're seeing reflected is coming off of the dust in the coma. So what that's, that means is that that might not really be the color of the nucleus. That might just be the color of the dust. So the interpretations of that and as the extent of which is it really organic chemistry and organic stuff that's going on on the surface or just red and dust for various reasons, I think is unclear as of now. As much as I would like to tell you some amazing discovery, currently it's unclear, but we might be able to get more answers with follow-up observations. 